All right, so if we look at the polynomials earlier that, that we had, and we take away all these things in blue, so we'll take this away and everything else, and we only look at a monomial, like one term of it, okay, we have what's called a power function. So here, the power function is made out of ax to the n, where a is a real number, it's not zero, and n is a positive integer. So the same requirements for the polynomial, except that here it's made out of a single monomial. Okay? And notice that this is actually kind of redundant, since single means one, and so does the prefix mono. So let's take a look at a couple. All right, so the simplest case to look at is here, where n is equal to 1, so our degree for this power function is 1, and the graph is going to be a straight line that passes through the origin, and if a is greater than 0, then you'll have a positive slope. If it's less than 0, then you have a negative slope. Let's look at some higher degrees. Okay, and here we have a general case where I'm making n an even number, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the graph will always be a parabola with the vertex at the origins, you can see here. But if a is greater than 0, so if it's positive, it'll go ahead and open upwards. If it's negative, then it'll be opening downwards from the origin. Okay. Notice that also they're always going to be symmetric about the y-axis, and your domain for both of these will be all real numbers. Now I mentioned that this is the general look for any of the even numbers, but what happens as they get higher, so from 2 to 4 to 6 to 8, well what's going to happen is that they'll increase in magnitude, so here it'll actually get steeper, faster. Now I mentioned that this is the general look for any of the even numbers, but what happens as they get higher, so from 2 to 4 to 6 to 8, well, what's going to happen is that they'll increase in magnitude. So here, it'll actually get steeper, faster. But here, it'll flatten out as it gets closer to uh, the x-axis. And the more you increase it, the steeper it'll become, but it'll flatten out as you get closer and closer to the x-axis. So you can say that the blue one would be, let's say, uh, x to the second power. The black one could be x to the fourth, and the green one could be x to the sixth. Another important feature to point out when you have n equal to an even number is that they'll always have three points. They will always have 0, 0, so we'll have the origin. We always have 1, 1, and we always have negative 1, 1. All right, now there's still some numbers that we actually haven't looked at yet, which are the rest of the odd numbers. We know that it, when it's 1, it's a straight line. But what about when it's 3, 5, 7, 9, blah, blah, blah? Well, here we have that when n is an odd integer that's greater than 1, we have a graph that looks like this, which looks like your cubic function, and it's symmetric about the origin. The domain and range is always going to be all real numbers. And as n increases, the more vertical that your graph will become. So it'll start to get steeper, kind of like we saw with the, with the even numbers. Okay, so this does this also. And notice that it'll flatten out just like your even numbers did when it's close to the x-axis. So this is what it looks like when a, okay, remember your coefficient is greater than 0 and when your a is less than 0. All right, so here they're asking me to graph f of x is equal to negative x to the fifth plus 1. So what you'll do is graph the power or parent function, as some people call it. And we see that it's x to the fifth. So we know that it's an odd number. We know that that's going to look like a cubic. And they actually always contain three points. They always contain the points 0, 0 negative 1, negative 1, and 1, 1. So we know that it's going to look something like this.
but there's some things going on. It's being multiplied by negative 1. So remember, that's that negative right here. So it's being multiplied by negative 1. So what happens there is that it will actually reflect our parent or power function over the x-axis. So this was negative 1, 1. This one was 1, 1. Negative 1, negative 1, sorry. This one will come up here. So we actually now have negative 1, 1, 0, 0. Our origin stays the same. But this one now comes to the fourth quadrant. That's too low. It'll be, instead of 1, 1, it will be 1, negative 1. So it gets reflected about the x-axis, and it'll look something like this. So we took care of what's going on here. But there's still an addition of 1. Now when something is being added by 1, what happens is that your graph will shift upwards by that number. In this case, it's 1. So let's grab this graph and move everything up by 1. So here, so we'll put back 0, 0. This is not negative 1, 1 anymore. Negative 1, 1 was right here, but it's going to move up by 1, so negative 1, 2. Negative 1, 2. This is not 0, 0 anymore. Moving it up by 1 will bring it here, which is 0, 1. And this is not negative 1, uh, 1, negative 1. It is now going up by 1 will be 1, 0. Okay, so everything is up by 1, and the shape is still going to be like this. Okay, everything just moved up. Okay, so that's how you graph a function just by knowing what the power looks like and then taking the transformations one step at a time. Okay, what about this one where they're asking me to graph f of x is equal to half x minus 1 to the fourth. So here I look at my function, lots of things happening to it, but it's actually not that bad. I notice that it's to the fourth power, so I know that it's going to look like a parabola. So I'll look at my parent or power function first. And parabolas always go through these three points. They'll always go through 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1. Okay, so I know that it looks like this. Yep. Mm, looks pretty bad, but you know, something like that. Um, now what's happening here, the first thing I gotta look at is this. It says x minus 1. Alright, so over here my video stopped recording for, for some reason. So let's finish it off like this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to desmos.com and I'm gonna use their online graphing calculator. Now remember, we had the function f of x here. I'm just gonna write it as y. So f of x is equal to x to the fourth, right? And we know that our, our main coordinates are negative 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1. Okay, so that's part of our, our parent uh, or power function. Our next one was something that looked like this. Okay, let's say f of x is equal to, we had a parentheses, and then there's had an x minus 1. Okay, let's see how they these two functions compare. So our original one is the red one, right? That's our parent function. In here, okay, this is a, a shift or a transformation. This seems to pretty much look exactly the same, but it has a shift towards the right. It looks like everything moved towards the right. And if we look at our units, it seems like it moved towards the right by one unit. Okay. Previously we had our coordinate to be negative 1, 1, but now it's 0, 1. Before our vertex at 0, 0 is now at 1, 0. And before our coordinate was 1, 1, now it's 2, 1. So it seems that when I have something in here, okay, if I'm subtracting, it will move it over 
to the right by that many units. For example, we can quickly see that if I put minus 2, compared to the parent function, everything is shifted to the right by 2. So let's see what happens if I add 3. Everything is shifted to the left by 3. Okay, so in here, though it seems counterintuitive, usually people think subtracting goes towards the left and adding goes towards the right. In this case, where it's inside, okay, your x, uh, it'll do the opposite. So subtracting makes it go to the right. We also had another transformation. I'm um, sorry, we also had another thing in our the power function. We had f of x is equal to half. Right, so let's add in here what we had left over. Okay, so now we're just adding the half, the factor of a half, and let's get hide this and let's just compare from blue to green. Okay, so this is on, only our shift to the right by one, but when I put in that half, okay, look, notice what happens here. Okay, and I'm going to change this to a, a table so you can see what's happening to the coordinates. Okay, so notice that our x's okay, are the same. Okay, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but here it seems that everything was affected by a factor of a half. Right, so uh, so looking at our mean coordinates, okay, uh, our x's are going to stay the same, but our y's, okay, are the things that are affected. They are now half, okay, from one to half and from one to half, okay. In this case, since it was zero, zero times, you know, a half is just going to stay at zero. So since we know the general shape, we can actually graph that quite quickly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps us up for today. And here's my son taking a couple of his first steps, and I'll see you next time.